thank you for having us and thank you to coach K for, uh, for making this day happen. Like this is, I, I told my wife this morning, this is the first time, um, that I let her know she's, she's kind of upset that I, <laughs> that I let her know so late, but she's like, you're doing a media day. Like this is happening at a high school level. And I'm like, yeah, this is, this is how we do it in Southern California. And this is how coach K does it. Um, and, and when we walk in, we're pretty amazed by the campus and by the setup. So thank you, coach. Really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, here at Huntington, we're all about, you know, hard work and, and doing things right and, and doing things, trying to be as perfect as we can in practice. And, um, you know, to, we're humbled to be a part of such a good, um, uh, day where there's so many different great programs and great coaches that probably do it the same way that we do it. You know, they're, everybody here seems to be um, the type of coach that uh, that I would want to play for. Um, and I think, and hopefully these boys understand that, that um, there's a lot of great programs here in Southern California and there's a lot of great coaches who care about their players. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm humbled to be a part of this. Thank you guys for being here. Obviously, you're taking the time out of the day, so we're open to any questions that you have, um, you know, for anybody. I have a question, Benji. Yes, sir. So, Eric, go ahead. Go ahead. See you already. You're Orange uh, County. I only drove uh, 80 miles, so I'll let you do <laughs> Yes, sir. Good. All right, so that's what I was just asking. So Caden's uh, w uh, position for him figured out uh, for sure? I mean, obviously he'll be one of our pitchers when he comes back from his 30-day sit. Uh, he'll be somewhere on the infield, maybe first base, maybe second base. We really don't want to take away from his arm uh, when he's on the mound. Um, but his bat will be in the lineup, and uh, he'll, be, he'll be somewhere either in the middle infield or at, at one of the corner spots. He'll be on the infield, though. Okay. Your pitching's pretty young this year, isn't it? A little bit, a little, yeah. a little a mix of both. Uh, I wouldn't say young. There's just maybe not as many innings as as we've had in the past. Uh, Thomas Babineau, who's committed to Cal State San Marcos, will be leading the charge before the the um, sits. You know, before those guys with their 35 day sit will come back. Uh, but Dominic Ventimiglia, Mike Coburn, actually Jag will pitch a little bit. Um, so we have a little bit of, of, of experience coming back, but our younger arms that we're really excited about uh, will get thrown into the fire early, and we'll see how they do. I got one last one, then I'll just hand the mic off to Mr. Sondheimer. Uh, do you like the way the playoffs are set up now? Um, no. And, and if you, okay, <laughs> and so my thought was going to be, if you, were to, if you were to tweak it, they gave you the power to change it up, what would you do? Uh, double elimination, I think we could model it after San Diego or we can model it after uh, the way Nevada does it. Um, just the one and done format, you know, that I, this isn't this isn't basketball, this isn't football. Um, you don't I don't think you really get a sense of how good a program is in one day. You know, I think if you go two out of three or, you know, double elimination, you can you can get into someone's pitching staff, you can get into the, the heart of their lineup a little bit more. Um, and anyone can beat anyone on any given day. Uh, we did that in 2013. We beat Modern Day, and we had no business beating Modern Day. They were number one in the nation. We were terrible. Um, and, we, and we knocked them out of the playoffs. So, you know, that, that helped us that year. Um, but we've been knocked out by a team, you know, by teams where I felt like, oh, man, that's just, you know, the one and done thing just uh, doesn't sit well for me. Um, so a double elimination would be the way I would go about it. Mm -hmm. I'm already seeing your, your line scores. You're already playing games on the weekend, and Jake seems to be has picked up where he left off last year. Can you just discuss how good a hitter he's become? Uh, I think th th both of these guys have worked really hard on their swing, and they have, um, you know, obviously been in the weight room, gotten stronger. And if you watch them both in their uniform, they 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 look really, they look a lot more physical than they did last year. So I think the added strength has helped them become better hitters. Um, yeah, he had a really good weekend at USD. Uh, I think he he's he's always liked hitting there uh, since we've we've gone on those trips. He always seems to hit really well at USD. Um, so yeah, he's you know Jake is going to be. Uh, they obviously both are going to hit two and three this year. Um, I don't know what order that's going to be. He could be two. He could be three. They're interchangeable, but um, they're both very very good hitters. They have very good approaches. 
Um, and they're not afraid. You know, now that they're seniors, they, they're not afraid. And I think that's the biggest thing when it comes to um, their success. Benji, uh, seems like since you've been there, it's just been one guy after another. Every so often, you got a couple guys. Dan or Prado a few years ago. Right. Josh last year. These two guys this year. What is it? I mean, what, what is it about the culture of your program? It's the stadium, that, man. Well, it's the stadium. You keep it's saying the green it's green grass. Stadium. You keep saying it's the stadium. But what is it about the culture of your program? The your longevity. I mean, your assistants have been with you for a while. I mean, right. how does all that stuff play into the success you've had as a program? I mean, it's going to start with our our coaching staff, uh, Coach Springson, Coach Rizeki, Coach Bernstein. They we've we've been together now for 15 years. Um, they all work on campus. Uh, we added Coach Urabe, who, you know, played at UCLA but played for us. Um, it's just consistency, you know, that it, we, we get into the Little Leagues. We kind of teach them at a young age um, how we're going to do it at Huntington. Um, and then we have just been teaching basically our, our way for a long time. So these kids are, you know, both of these guys came through our feeder program. Uh, they knew how we were going to do it at Huntington, you know, when they were 13 years old. Um, and so now it's become like this thing where like it, it's, it's an honor and a privilege to put on the Huntington uniform um, and to, you know, to play in that stadium and to play our competition that we play. You know, we have Jay Sarah on our schedule and we play Harvard Westlake all the time and all the different things, all the different tournaments we go to. Um, you know, it's uh, it's pretty cool. With that being said, we have g great leaders, you know, and we have guys who like Daniel and Bo Amaral and Jesse Kewitt and, you know, Han and Prado and Danner who come back and they share their experiences of when they were here and they they know the Huntington way and they, and they preach it and they make sure that, you know, that all these guys kind of stick to that code. Um, so, you know, it's a combo of, you know, past alumni and a, and a really good coaching staff that's stuck together for a long time. The stadium doesn't hurt. Then the stadium <laughs> does not hurt at all. I got it. Benji, Steve Doherty, PBR. Jake, UCLA, Jag, Cal. Tell us a little bit about why. Why those schools and, and what they mean to you. I mean, I've known a lot of people go through UCLA, and I know it's a really prestigious school. And I mean, I've talked to the guys that have gone through that program a lot, and uh, they seem to really like it. And they've produced a lot of really good talent. I mean, it's in California. It's my favorite state. The weather's awesome. Uh, baseball's really good. So that's all I can ask for. I love it. So um, for me, I just really wanted to play in the pack, and I wanted to find a place where education could play a big part, also. Um, but really, like, I was looking around other schools, and I, I wanted to find a place that really fit. And right when I walked onto that campus at Cal, you walk onto the field, and the sun's shining, and all the buildings are surrounding it. I knew right away, like, this was a place for me. It was with Coach Jackson and Coach New there now. I knew it was going to be a good fit. Steve, you're not on CA Sports Zone. Uh, this is a question for all three of you. Uh, recent poll had you guys at 30 in the nation. How much stock do you put into that? We are actually talking about it on the way over here um, about the different teams that are ranked in the nation. And as a as a head coach and trying to keep teenagers focused, I try to make sure that that doesn't mean anything. You know, I try to tell them that. But from like a head coach standpoint and like as a program and being you know the head coach here for 20 years and being able to say, hey, look, you know, we've been in the national rankings for the last you know eight years. There there is some there's something to that. And and you know I. I'm humbled that we are ranked in the nation and that we are a, around a bunch of really good programs, uh, you know, but trying to get everybody to just, you know, hey, just calm down, you know, and they're really, you know, just let's focus on the task at hand. Try not to give that much weight to it. Yeah, I agree with Coach. I mean, it, it shouldn't really matter about the rankings as long as we're playing hard and doing what we need to do. So to me, it doesn't really matter, but yeah, it's, it, I think it's cool. It's, it's definitely humbling. I mean, I can add on. Like, yeah, I mean, you look at it, and there's no way to not talk about it because you see the numbers, and you think, okay, yeah, you acknowledge it, but you can't let it affect the way you go out about your day every single day. Like, it changes nothing. It changes nothing that we do at Huntington. I just want to be at the end, you know? I want to be one at the end. That's what, that's when it really matters. Coach Bob Gibson, SoCal Prep Report. Uh, there are some schools who, you know, uh, you know, play a really tough schedule early on. They get a little bit of a break. 
when it comes to league. Uh, but we know the sunset you know, can be a real grind as well. Do you think that keeps your team a little sharper? Um, you know, ha having to play that, you know, that, that, you know, that grinded out that, that sun sunset league schedule as well? Hey, I mean, the, our preseason schedule for the last couple of years have been, it, you know, when I go into it, I'm thinking, can we just be 500 at the end of this pre? You know, I'll be happy if we're six and six by the time we finish with our preseason. Um, and then there is our our league schedule is is going to be tough too. You know, every even though they split our league, um, and actually it made it harder because now we only have nine league games. Um, which that's if you want to ask me, Friar, about that, what I think about that, I'll let you know about that too. Um, but you know, so. Potentially, we could miss the playoffs. Potentially, we could we could start off, you know, we can get hurt or we can just play some bad games. There is no margin for error uh, in our schedule whatsoever. Um, so I'm hoping that it preps our boys. I'm hoping that we go into league and we're sharp and we're tough and and we have that killer mentality. But um, you know, it, it's baseball. Anything can happen, and and hopefully we we show up healthy and uh, ready to to play those tough teams. Hey, Benji, I'm Connor. I'm with Scorebook Live. I know you talked about the pitching earlier. Would you mind uh, answering this quick question? You mentioned Thomas Babineau is probably going to be the number one until you got some transfers eligible. When everyone's ready to play, what's the staff going to look like? Well, it's kind of hard to turn my back on Aoki. Um, you know, but adding Tyler Conant uh, from Milliken to the staff, uh, kind of a long, lanky, hard-throwing righty, uh, you know, he's going he's gonna to get in the mix, too. Um, we watched Aoki threw his first inning um, for us against Servite on Saturday, and he threw nine pitches, and it was just boom, boom, boom. You know, both sides of the plate, off speed and everything else. We're like, okay, yeah, we got it. You know, he, he's pretty dang good. Um, but then Tyler came in, and, and he can elevate the fastball, and he can drop in a curveball, and, you know, the ball's coming out of the same tunnel. Um, so it's, he's going to be tough on guys, too. Um, so it's kind of a, a three-headed monster, and, and I don't want to—I don't want to take anything away from Thomas. Thomas is pitching great. Um, he's going to come right after you, and and I think he has—he has a lot of experience, you know, from last year where we feel really comfortable with him on the mound. Is Caden eligible? He is not. Hey Jake, this question's for you. Um, take us through your summer. I mean, it was a really busy summer. Obviously, you know, you did a bunch of different things, both in state and out of state, and. Specifically, let's talk about the area code games and that experience and just kind of how it all kind of culminated there for you. Well, I mean, I had worked really hard and I'd made the area code and the perfect game, but I had had a back injury, so I didn't actually play in the area code games or the perfect game event. Uh, it was really tough for me because I had worked so hard to get to those two events, but I mean, I had to do what I had to do and I, I still went to the events and I participated in everything, but uh, I had to watch. I had to watch all these kids have fun, play baseball, which kind of which kind of sucked. But I mean, it was a good experience, I think, for me to kind of get a break and you know watch everything unfold for myself. So it did, it was tough, though. Coach, these are the now. Tell us one or two players that you're really excited about that's coming up that may make an impact this year. So we have our in our freshman class. We have Aiden Espinoza. Uh, he's a left left outfielder. Um, pretty sweet swing. Um, he reminds me a lot of when Jag came in his freshman year. Um, you know, he's going to be he's going to be in the mix in the outfield. He's going to get some time. Uh, obviously, Ralphie Velasquez, uh, a corner infielder. Um, he's he's showing he hit his first home run uh, against uh, who was that Corona against Corona on Saturday. And I heard his dad say, it's about time. Like he's been you could tell that he's been trying to do this, but the kid has Big time power. It was a big time power, and and he actually could play some defense too. So those are the two young kids that we're really excited about. But Jack Smith is a big right-handed pitcher um, that you guys saw at USD. Um, we feel like he's going to be a pretty dominant force for us in the next couple of years. Um, but he's going to get some time for us too. Any last questions for head coach Benjamin? Um, Benji, what made Coach Altabelli, such a special coach. That's a good question, and and uh, Andrew Turner asked me the same one. Hopefully, I can get through this. Uh, he he always seemed like it was just about family, you know. And I talked to Brode, Justin Brode. He's playing for him right now, and and uh, we talked for about an hour the other night. And he's just like he brings everybody in. Like he, when he's talking to the team, they won their state championship. Brody said that he grabbed 
everybody in the stands, everyone that wanted to be a part of OCC, he grabbed them, brought them around, and, and talked to them, uh, talked to everybody, and gave every not, not just his team, but like the parents and everybody. Everything was a family with Alto. Um, and so I've known him for 20 years, and you know, from my first year, he treated me like uh, like an equal, you know. And and it didn't seem like he was a baseball coach. He just seemed like uh, just a normal dude, you know. He just seemed like a normal guy who happened to be a really good baseball coach and a baseball mind. Um, so I think that's what I will remember. And and I told Andrew this. I'm like, I want. And, you know, we're all dads and, you know, we want to put our family first. And baseball sometimes gets in the way. It never seemed like it got in the way with Alto, ever. It was always his family.